Hello everybody, in today's video I'm going to be showing you a super simple way in which you can integrate Firebase with your Flutter application. We're going to be taking a look at how to integrate Firebase with both iOS and Android, and the steps that I'm going to be showing you will also help you in integrating Firebase with your Flutter application in the case that you're building for either desktop or web. So with that said, let's get into the video. So to get started, the first thing that we're going to be doing is installing the Firebase CLI tool within our system so that we have actually access to it and we can use it to basically configure our Flutter projects correctly to work with Firebase. So to do that, what I'll recommend is that firstly, you come to a website called nodejs.org. And then from here, you can install the long-term stable version for Node.js, whatever that may be for you. And once you're done with that, then what you can do is actually come on to your terminal. In the case of Windows, this is going to be partial. And here, I'm just going to increase the size for you guys so that it's easier for you guys to actually see what's going on. And I'm going to basically type node dash dash version. And if you get an output, that basically means that node is now correctly installed in your system. And then you can do npm dash dash version as well, which stands for node package manager. And if you get outputs for these, then you're good to go. From here, the next thing that we're going to be doing is actually installing the Firebase CLI tools. So for that, what you can do is type in npm, then after this installed, ash dash g for the global flag. And then from there, you're going to do Firebase dash tools. Once this is done, you can press enter and this is going to go ahead and install the CLI tools for you. So now that node is properly installed on our system and we have access to the Firebase CLI tools, what we can actually do is close down terminal. And I'll recommend that you restart your Visual Studio Code instance as well and then open up a terminal window within that, making sure that you're within the directory that contains the source code for your Flutter application. And then after this, the first thing that I'm going to be doing is just Firebase login, and then it's going to basically open up a web browser window for you where you can actually authenticate with Firebase and then make the CLI actually have access to the Firebase account and actually take a look at all of the projects that you have within Firebase. We're going to get an output saying success, you're logged in successfully now. So you can clear the terminal window and this command is going to be the same whether for Windows or Mac OS and you can move on to the next step. So for the next step, what I recommend doing is actually going to Firebase, logging into the appropriate account with which you logged in through the CLI as well, and then going to create a project, clicking on it and giving your project a name. So in this case, I'm going to call it Flutter Firebase Tutorial. Um, I could have named it something cheesy like subscribe, but you all know the gist, so subscribe if you haven't. Uh, then I'm going to say enable Google Analytics for this, um, an account for this, just do default account, then create the project and wait for the project to be created. And once the project is created, then I'll resume the video. Welcome back everybody. So now that our Firebase project has been created, I'm going to click on continue. And, and after this, it's going to basically take me into the actual Firebase console where I can manage my project. And I'm just going to dock this window to the side. So the next thing that now I'm going to be doing is just performing a quick sanity check to make sure that my Firebase CLI tool has been integrated properly. So for that, I'll just do Firebase projects and then colon list and make sure that the output I get corresponds to whatever projects I have within Firebase. Since I only had one, I'm just getting one output. So this basically means that our Firebase CLI tools are now properly installed, integrated, and we actually have a project created within Firebase that now we're going to be linking with Flutter. So to do the actual linking process within Flutter and Firebase, we're going to be using a CLI tool called Flutter Fire, and we're going to be installing it by doing the command dart pub global activate, I believe, and then I'm going to say flutter under fire underscore CLI, like so, and press enter. And this is going to go ahead and install the Flutter Fire CLI for me. Once this is going to finish with its execution, it's going to let me know that it installed Flutter Fire and it's activated it as well. So now that we have the Flutter Fire CLI ready to go, what I'm going to be doing is making sure that my current working directory for the terminal is the same place where I have all of the code for my Flutter project. And here, what I'm going to be doing is typing in flutter fire and then configure like so, and then pressing enter. And what this is basically going to do is now it's firstly going to interact with the Firebase CLI. It's going to get all of the projects for me. Now I can use the arrow keys to actually go between the options that I have available here to select whatever Firebase project I want to link with my flutter app. So in this case, I'm going to be doing the first one, which is this, you can use the arrow keys to go between this, then using the same methodology of using the arrow keys, it's going to ask me which platforms do I want to support. In my case, I'll just restrict it to Android or iOS. So to select or deselect them, you can use the space bar and use the arrow keys to move up and down. So I'll keep 
Android and iOS checked, I'll uncheck macOS and the web and then to proceed, press enter. Once this is done, it's going to basically go ahead, do all of the setup process for you. This includes the tedious process of getting the info.plist files, configuring them properly, setting up the Firebase options files and everything like that. And at the end, you will have a project that is completely configured, properly set up so that all you have to do is drop in the dependencies for Firebase for whatever plugins you want to use, and then you are on your way. So now that this is done, at the end, it's going to ask you a bunch of options. Just reply yes to all of them. Um, and then it's going to give you an output saying that now the Firebase configuration file was generated successfully. Here it is. It contains all of the information that you need and we'll fix there in just a bit. So with this, I'll clear the terminal and now I have the actual app configured properly. The last thing that we need to do is include the dependencies for Firebase that we want to use within our project. So regardless of whatever actual products you use from the services that Firebase offers, there's always one plugin that you need to include if you're using Firebase, and that is the Firebase core package. As a side note, links to all of the resources that I use in this video are down in the description below. So feel free to take a look at them if you're confused at any point. So I'm going to come to my pubspec.yaml file. I'm going to come to the dependency section, and then I'm going to add the Firebase core dependency here, like so. And besides this, I want to add Firebase analytics as well. So I'll basically copy the dependency for Firebase analytics and paste it under Firebase core as well. And then I'll do command save. With this done, I'll let Flutter get do its magic and install the actual dependencies. And you're going to notice that now the error that we were getting for Firebase options is fixed and it's no longer giving us that error. So now that the actual dependencies have been installed, what I can do is actually give my application a test run before I do anything else and make sure that it builds properly. Welcome back everybody. So now that the application is actually running on the simulator properly, I know that the actual dependencies were installed properly and they're not causing any kind of conflicts. So the last thing we need to do is before we actually start running our application is to initialize Firebase so that our application has access to it. So to do that, what I'll do is that within my main function, I'll mark it as asynchronous. And then after this, I'm going to go ahead and import two packages, which is the Firebase core and then the Firebase options file. And then after this, what I'm going to be doing is basically in my main function before I called run app to firebase.initialize app. And then here I'm going to give it a options parameter to be the Firebase options file. So just do default Firebase options. And then I'm going to do dot current platform. Um, and then add a semicolon at the end to command save. And I'm also going to mark this as an evade call so that we wait for the app to initialize before we actually run the app. Then I'm going to restart my application. And if you get an error, which says flutter error where bindings have not been initialized, well, an easy way to fix this is just to stop running your application and then do flutter bindings or widgets flutter bindings dot ensure initialized like so. And then if you do this, then it should pretty much fix the error for you. So do command save and start running your application again. And hopefully this time we shouldn't get the actual bindings error. Welcome back everybody. So now you can see that we were able to successfully initialize our application and then initialize Firebase and then run it. So everything's working as intended. So the last thing that I'm going to be doing is at the very top of my actual application, I'm going to go ahead and import the Firebase analytics package as well. And I believe we have nothing else to do besides just importing the package and it does everything by itself. So once this is done, I'm going to basically start running my application. I'm going to start debugging it again. And while this happens, I'm going to go to Firebase and I am going to show you guys that what the actual uh, Flutter Fire CLI did. So remember that when we actually created our Firebase project, we had it as empty and there were no actual platforms that were connected to it. But now if I reload the same Firebase project, you are going to be seeing that the Flutter Fire CLI actually created a Android app for us, an iOS app for us. And in the case that we were actually creating a desktop application or a web-based application, that it would have created those apps as well within our Firebase project. So with this done, we know that everything is working. The last thing that I'm going to be doing is making sure that this app works for iOS as well. So for that, I'll just shut down my Android simulator. I'll open up a iOS simulator, and then I'll start debugging the application for it. Welcome back, everybody. So as you can see, the application is running correctly on iOS as well. So 
So that basically means that there is nothing else for us to do besides celebrate. And that's pretty much it for the tutorial as well. So if you enjoyed the tutorial, then please don't forget to leave a like on the video as well as subscribe to my channel so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. If you have any questions, comments or concerns, leave them down in the comments below and I'll try my best to answer them for you. And as always, stay happy, stay healthy, keep learning, keep growing. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.